Yeah, here we are at Willway Distribution in Avon, Ohio again. And as I said last week, we were going to kind of change the venue this week, and we're going to do it. This week we're going to feature plants that demand full sun environments. Many, many plants grow in the sun, as we all know, but the ones we're going to feature, there's probably about a dozen, are ones that have to be placed in the sun. If they're not, in a period of time, six months, one year, two years, they will turn very, very ugly. And by the way, most of these plants that you're going to see today are ones that are very good in a commercial site. In other words, they're tough plants, will take abuse. Most of them are somewhat drought tolerant. So good commercial plants, so keep that in mind as we go. Okay, today we're going to start in the roses. As most of you know, roses do command sun. And by sun, I am talking anywhere between six to eight hours for best performance. If you plant them in shadier areas, they will not bloom well, and the plants will, again, turn a little bit ugly for you. So keep them in full sun environments. Now we're over in the juniper, juniper blocks. Junipers are the old-fashioned plants. Many, many of you have used them in the past. But one thing I personally have found out about junipers, and I have tried it, is they do not tolerate much shade or semi-shade. For best performance, junipers should be planted in the full sun. And like I say, this one is a little bit on the drought resistant side once it is established, so a good commercial plant. Yeah, we're now standing in a block of the old-fashioned Texas U's. Most of you are familiar with them. They've been around for years. Still a popular plant. And they are a great sun plant, primarily. And next week, we're going to talk about them again. And we'll be talking about semi-shade plants next week. Yeah, while we're in the junipers, something I'd like to show you. A lot of the junipers do come with a yellow color to them. Most of you know that. But if you would plant this particular juniper, which is gold lace, in a shaded, semi-shaded area, here's what is going to happen to the top of the plant, which is now yellow. Yeah, we now have moved over to the boxwood area. Very, very popular plants. We now have excellent, excellent inventory on them. But the same as with the taxes. They are great sun plants, as we all know. But next week, we're going to talk about them again, too. by the mop cypress, you're all familiar with them. Very, very popular plant, good color. But there again, not to get repetitive, but the same thing does happen to mop cypress. You get it in too shady of an area, it will grow in the semi-shade. However, you're not gonna get the good yellow color. So why mess around? Just get it in the sun and that's where it wants to be. It will be happy. Next week, we'll talk about some of its, bro some of its brothers the other types of cypresses, and we'll make a little adjustment on that sun requirement with those, but mops must be in the sun. We're in the holly area, and something has changed in my estimation about holly. Many, many years ago, when I was a young landscaper, all holly was always placed in semi-shade areas, preferably eastern exposure. Since this new strain came out, the blue hollies, quite a few years ago, Guess what? They perform best in full sun. I would not put them in a full exposure, say from northwest winds, but they do best in a full sun or a very, very light shade. I'm standing in front of a group of inkberry, Ilex glabra, green magic. This is, by the way, a Willway introduction. I learned a long time ago about inkberry. 
started using them probably 30 years ago and we all thought that they kind of would take a semi shade to shade that's not true I found out the hard way a woman insisted on putting them in a semi shade area I agreed being younger and stupid and guess what they lost their bottoms they thinned out they became very floppy definitely put ilex flavor in the sun it'll pay off for you yeah now we're in the area with japanese maples okay as you know they come in two colors burgundy and green we're going to be talking about the red ones or the burgundy ones today and the green ones next week but as you can see they do have on the inside of the plant the leaves do turn green but on the outside they stay burgundy colored and that's because of the sun so they, that makes them a, definitely a sun plant if you want to show the good color all season long put them in too much uh, shade semi shade they will turn turn green just like the inside of the plant the reason that is the inside of the plant is shaded by the good leaves on the outside so sun plant Okay, another plant that must, must have full sun are the grasses. Right now, grasses in the real world are at their peak and also here at WDC are at their best for the season. They are really nice this year. We had just enough of heat to push them. But never, ever, ever try to grow a grass in the shade or semi-shade. It don't work. Quick story. This past weekend I was over with a friend of mine, we popped a couple of cold ones, he showed me his new little landscape project he did, he's not too knowledgeable, and planted it in the spring, been about four months, three months, and put grasses in shade. And they, in that short time, were already starting to turn to mush. Just don't try to do it. There are several that you can use, which we're going to touch on next week, but basically grasses are a sun plant. Yeah, now we're over in the barberry, and basically the same thing. These are colored plants, and you will see green in the middle. If you plant these in not enough of sun, guess what happens? The tips, which are showing all the color right now, also turn that color. That's not what your customer is expecting. It's not what you would expect. If you bought a red plant, you want a red plant. You bought a yellow one, you want a yellow one. So make sure you're using full sun on Barberry. Here's another plant that has colored foliage, yellow. This is the old golden vicary. I'm going to show you something that happened here a little bit different than the other things but these two will definitely turn green if they're not getting enough of sun now here's an example right here of a golden vicary that has been here for a while okay this was a later crop that became ready you can see the good yellow color however on the inside of the plant you can see how green it gets again just showing you that example now the one next to it over here, this has just come in recently. This plant here was growing close to a wood line over at the main nursery. And this has more green on it on the outer tips compared to the other one. But give this a week or so here in the sun and that will revert back on those tips. But that's how much just a little bit of shade can affect a colored plant. Now we're over in the spirea patch. Spirea is a great plant, been used for many years. There are some new varieties out, okay? You might try some of them. However, the main point with this is it is definitely a sun plant. You try to grow a spirea in a semi shade or shade, and you probably have seen this before. They tend to get very, very leggy, bloom is sparse, and basically turn ugly. So don't use spirea in a shaded area. It's not going to work.
Yeah, now we're over in the Miss Kim Lilac house with other lilacs also. Lilac is a little different uh, program. What happens with a lilac? A lilac plant itself will grow in semi-shade, even some denser shade. Problem is, you'll never see a, a lilac flower on it. They do need sun to bloom, and that also holds true for any plant that is labeled for the sun that is blooming must have sun. That sunlight is very, very important for the flower. So plant a sun plant in the sun. Now we're over in the Budlia area. The one I'm standing in is Miss Molly. Beautiful, beautiful plant. But just like grasses, don't ever try to grow butterfly bush in the shade. It's not going to happen. It just mushes out. You'll never see a flower. Definitely, definitely, this is a sun plant. Yeah, this is the last plant we're going to show you today involved with sun plants and this happens to be a weeping white pine and what I'm going to say refers to all the pine that are in the Strobus family, long soft needle pine. Don't use them in a shaded area. Give them two years in a shaded area, they're going to lose their configuration. They get real wimpy, you'll see just a little bit of green needle on the tips. Whereas some of the other conifers, such as spruce, will take light shades, semi-shades, but white pine is a no-no. So we're going to wrap it up with this particular plant. Next week we do hope to see you here again. And what we're going to review next week are plants that are made for semi-shade conditions. And the following week it will be plants that are made for dense shade conditions, which is really a tough one. So we'll see you next week.